Hello Stampers, it's Debbie with Stamp It With Debbie and today I have three fun projects to show you that have to do with pumpkins. And it's three different ways to make pumpkins out of products in the current catalog. And let me just show you the projects real quick. This one here is a pumpkin card and uh, on the bottom it says season of thanks but you could do a hello any birthday even if someone had a birthday in October. This is a new mini Kirby keepsake box and I just have a little string at the top and it's got a little tab there and then you can fill it with treats inside. So I'm going to show you how to make this with one of our new products from the holiday catalog. And then the last item uses some designer paper, cardstock, and you can either use, I've done two examples here, I used the two inch circle punch and then I also did another sample using the ovals. So it's a pumpkin and I'll turn it sideways, it does stand up. And this is using some of the designer paper from the catalog and that is in the um, Come Together designer series paper pack. And then this is the Pretty Peacock. So I've just alter, alternated that. And then this one here is using the Circle Punch. Same paper with Cajun Craze. And I'm gonna show you how to make all of these projects. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one I wanna show you is this one here. And this is from a suite in the catalog. Um, it's actually with the Let It Snow suite. And as you can see here, it does come bundled with the Tiny Keepsake stamp set along with the mini Kirby Keepsake box. Now, if you've been with Stampin' Up! a while, you know that we used to have another mini, uh, another Kirby Keepsake. I like them both. I like this one a little better and I'll show you why when we get started, but this is all one piece. So you don't have to glue them together. They're gonna fit perfectly every single time. And again, you can order these as a bundle and save 10%. Or you can order them separate if you don't want to order the stamp set. So let me show you how to create this project. I do need my big shot. I'm going to set that aside so I don't smush it. And you need a half a piece of cardstock. And I'm just gonna set that right there. Now you don't quite need a half a piece. You're gonna have a little bit left over on the end and you're just gonna put your die right there and run it through the Big Shot. And then you can see it comes right out. I'm gonna set this, my Big Shot aside. And you can see it just pops right out of the die. And these pieces here on the end also just pop right out. Now on this one, I did a little bit of stamping. I used the Buffalo check. Hopefully you can see that. I just wanted to give a little texture to it. So I have that in my Stamparatus. Now this stamp set is not, or this stamp is not big enough to cover the whole um, die when you cut it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up so that it will st stamp over where this crease is. It's going to get this curve and this curve and it's just going to slightly go over there. So I'm going to arrange it how I want it to be here. And then I'm just going to stamp it down there. And then I'm going to bring my pumpkin pie ink in and ink this all up. And then before I start, I'm going to use a little piece of washi tape. The Stamparatus does come with a magnet. Sometimes I just like to use the washi tape. So today that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring it down. Just make sure that the ink is evenly spread over there. And I like the way that looks. Now, 
Using this method, you're only gonna get half of it. You could maybe manipulate this around a little bit, but I don't think that anyone's really gonna see this part because it's folded over on the top right here. Um, if you wanted it to be stamped, you could move it around just a little bit so that it gets get some ink on it as well. So now I'm going to just make sure this piece is in line with the stamp. Stick that down with some washi tape again. Bring my ink back over one more time. And now if I didn't like the way that it stamped, if it wasn't inked up enough, because it's the Stamparatus, you can stamp it multiple times. And I'm actually gonna show you on the pumpkin card how I did that. So just, I'm gonna fix this right here just in case some of you may not like that. So I'm gonna line it back up. I can kind of eyeball it and use my washi tape. I'll bring that in. Whoops, I don't think I put any ink on that side. And now that side also has some, some ink there. And again, you're not really gonna see it a whole lot because that's the part that folds over. So I'll set this aside. I'm gonna close up my ink. And I do need a bone folder for this. So I'm gonna fold, of course, with my stamping to the outside. And then on these pieces right here, there is a little, right here, there's a little score line. So you just wanna kind of bend that a little bit and it needs to fold out. And then one thing that I like to do is take my bone folder and go just very lightly on these two outer sides. It kind of breaks up a few of the fibers and helps the box close together a little bit more. So now you're gonna take these two pieces with the tab on the top, hold them together and kind of lightly bend them down and bring one side up and then bring the other tab up. Let me hold it this way. So you can see this side is already there. I'm gonna hold it by the tab and bring that tab down. So now our pumpkin box is pretty finished. We just wanna put a face. Now I am using some Baker's or uh, white linen thread. And I did color this with my Stampin' Blends markers because I wanted it to be green. And to do that, all you need to do is, you can use it with your Stampin' Blends marker or another marker. Basically, take your white thread, take the fat end of your marker and kind of pull it through. You might need to do it a couple times, but it will change the color of your thread. Another way that you can do that is cut off some of the white baker's twine and put a couple drops of your re-inker into a little container of water and then put your thread in there and it will also do that. You'll just have to find a place to hang it to dry so that it won't um, touch anything because you don't want the re-inker on anything. So you can get it both ways. Now, to make the face here, I could have cut the face and I did leave a mouth off of there. You could color it. You may have a stamp that you already own that you could stamp on there. And I would advise doing that before you put the box together, figure out what size is gonna be your face. So like I said, you could draw it on there with a marker. You can um, use a stamp set that you have. I discovered that on my hot air balloon punch, there's a triangle. So I just thought that I would use a piece of black paper and cut a couple triangles there. Whoops, they all stayed inside of the punch there. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid adhesive Well, maybe I am. Let's see. There we go. And I'm just going to put two eyes and a nose. I'm not going to actually put a mouth on this one. I liked it without, so you could punch the eyes and then draw a mouth on there if you want. 
So there's my little jack-o'-lantern. If you would rather, you could stamp Happy Halloween or something else on the side. That would be perfectly fine, too. So there is pumpkin number one. Okay, now let's move on to the card. And again, pumpkins are not just for Halloween or just for Thanksgiving. Pumpkins can be all year long. And so I liked this one because it's kind of fall, but it's not necessarily one or the other. Now I did stamp on their seasons of thanks, but again, you could put happy birthday or whatever you choose. So I started with a piece of Whisper White cardstock, cut it five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm just going to fold that in half and that will be my card base. I'm not doing a lot of layers, trying to keep it simple. And then to get the pieces for this, I did use my uh, Buffalo check stamp again. And I used Gorgeous Grape, Very Vanilla, and Pumpkin Pie. And I just used black on all of them. Now one tip for the black with the Stamparatus that I really like is that if you don't like how dark it comes out the first time, ink up the stamp again and do it again and again. Some of these I did three or four times. A couple of them I liked the way they looked at too. So you just have to decide what looks best to you. And how I cut these was with the layering ovals and I used the very smallest one in the set. So all we need to do is assemble our pumpkins and I am going to use some tear and tape. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So I overlap two of them. Hopefully you can see here. And I'm just going to tape them together. Now you could use scotch tape there if you would prefer. And then we're just going to put another piece of tape on the back of here and hook them together. I am going to pull this off just to give it one more thing to stick to. And we're going to do this with all three of our pumpkins. So we're going to have three pumpkins in a row. And they don't need to be perfect. They just need to look cute. And so I'll tape those together. Pull this piece off. And put this one right in the middle. So there we have two of them done. So I stamped, when I stamped, I stamped the whole uh, buffalo check stamp and then I was able to do several pumpkins out of each stamping. So you can see with this one that I stamped the whole image and so I got several pumpkins out of that one. So it's goes a long way for the how you have to stamp there. All right, here's our last pumpkin. Oh, let me get this one off of here. And then, then all we need to do is, I'm going to turn these over. You can see this one I did a little stamping again on the other side. I'm going to use a piece of soft suede, and I'm just cutting it into... Um, a small strip I didn't even really measure. I'm going to cut the end off so that it's at a slight angle you can see there. I'm going to do that for all three pieces. And then, well, I have tear and tape here. I'll just use that. I'm going to put that on the back. of all three pieces. And then I think what I'm gonna do is turn them over so I can kind of see how far the stem is sticking out, how much I like it out. There we go, just like that. And then pumpkin number two and number three. And then the last thing I need to do is, before I put these on, I wanna go ahead and stamp my greeting. And again, I'm using Season of Thanks, and this comes from the Gather Together stamp set out of the catalog, the holiday catalog. And there are dies that go along with this set. I'm just going to stamp over here in the corner. And 
And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of adhesive to make this quicker. I'm gonna do my one in the center first and kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you wanted to, you could pop one of the pumpkins up with dimensionals. The other thing I was thinking would be really cute is if you popped up the center piece might be cute on that too. So there we go for that. And then the very last thing is I'm gonna use some linen thread and I'm going to, I'm gonna double this up. So I basically have two pieces. I'm gonna tie a bow. And then I'm just gonna pull it tight and cut a little bit off the ends. And then hopefully, yep, I'm gonna put that on with a glue dot right in the center. And I like to, when I'm doing a bow, just kind of take my finger and fold that glue dot in so that it doesn't stick out beyond the bow and get stuck to the envelope. And there we go. Project number two. How do you like it? Okay, project number three. The third way to make a pumpkin this fall for some decoration is, again, I used ovals for this one and circles for this one. And let me show you how to create this one. Now, what you need to do is stamp out or punch out, sorry, six of a solid color, or you could make it all designer paper if you want. It's yours, you can choose. You could stamp an image on here or make it all one color if you want to and run it through an embossing folder. But what I'm doing for mine today is I cut six of the Cajun craze and I cut six of the designer paper. And I used the two inch circle punch on this one here and then again on this one, I used the layering ovals, but but I still used, made six of the plain color, or the cardstock, six of the designer paper. Now, all you need to do is fold these in half and whatever piece of the designer paper you want to show on your pumpkin, that's what you wanna to fold to the center. So I'm gonna fold these both to the center and you do wanna use your bone folder to get a nice crease in there. And then also this one the designer paper folds pretty easily, but the cardstock needs a little more encouragement. Now, to save a little time, I did already hook these together, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. I'm gonna use tear and tape or another strong adhesive because you want this to stay together. You don't want your project to fall apart. And so all I did was alternate. I folded the circles in half. Let me show you over here first before I get that one. All right, so these are folded in half. And I'm going to put the adhesive on here. I'm going to peel it off. So this is just one of them. Now I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to bring it right over here and match it up the best I can. It does not have to be perfect because once your pumpkin is open, if it's not exactly matched up, no one is ever going to know. Okay, so just alternate, do designer paper, then um, cardstock or whatever two designs you're using. And so here's the third one. Now the other thing that I did do, now I'm gonna bring in this piece that I already put a whole bunch together. And this one has some adhesive. Now I wanna make sure this is the cardstock. So now I'm gonna put the next one is gonna be the designer paper. And on the bottom here, hopefully you can see, this is flat. So after about four um, half circles that I folded together, I snipped off the end and then as I went every three, so I was gluing, alternating between cardstock and designer paper, about every three or four, I turned it over and I looked to see where that other one was and I just clipped it off. That way I got them all even and some weren't longer than the other. You could do it at the beginning, but I think it's easier once they're glued together because then you know they're gonna 
be exactly where they're supposed to be in the pumpkin once it's opened up. Now the last thing that you need to do before you fold this piece together is on this one I cut a piece of paper and I did add a few little um, paper leaves there. This one I didn't add any leaves yet but I'm thinking about what else I could do. I'm thinking some cardstock and if you just run it through your bone folder it gets a little bit curly or you could put some curly ribbon on there or I might just leave it like that. I went out in my yard and I got this little tiny stick and what I did is I just ran a piece of tear and tape around the edge at the bottom so it's just twirled around here this is the top of my pumpkin because this is flat and I can't kind of just sat it inside of there so now it's going to stick to the papers when I roll them together so the last thing that I need to do is get two more pieces of tear and tape and put it on either side of the pumpkin here. And then all I'm gonna do is open it all the way up and bring these two pieces together. Oops. Okay, and then just kind of squeeze them in the middle and that will make your stick stick a little bit more. Um, mine's a little bit tall but you could trim it down if you need to. And then just kind of fan these apart just a little bit and you can see that it creates a really cute decoration for fall. If you 